This page contains practical information about why the denial of promotion cases against employers based on claim discrimination are generally harder to prove and harder to win than wrongful termination cases. And this page also explains why so often failure to promote cases are less attractive to pursue financially and also practically for attorneys and for their clients. Now I would like to talk about several types of facts and evidence that would make that failure to promote case more attractive, more compelling and worth pursuing. The first and the best type of evidence that you can have in a failure to promote case, just like you would in pretty much any other case, is smoking gun evidence. It's an email or a witness who heard your employer, who heard your manager or your supervisor say that you are not going to get that promotion because of your race, age, disability, familial status, gender, sexual orientation, and so forth. This is the best type of evidence in many civil cases. Failure to promote cases are not an exception. This type of evidence, a single witness who is willing to testify on your behalf or sign a declaration, a single email can make a difference between a no case and a case, and between a weak case and a very strong case. The second type of evidence, which is not quite smoking gun evidence, but still a very strong evidence, is a general statement by your manager or by your supervisor that they do not like promoting people who belong to the same category as you are. If you're disabled, then they say something bad about disabled people. We're not going to promote disabled people, or we're not going to promote women, or we're not going to promote gays, or we're not going to promote Jews or Muslims. So. If you belong to that category and your supervisor said something like that, preferably uh, close in time to your request for promotion, uh, that really helps. That's a serious and significant evidence of discrimination in those types of failure to promote cases. The third type of evidence, which is weaker but can be used in conjunction, in conjunction with other types of evidence, is repeated denials of promotion. So, let's say you applied for the same promotion or for a similar promotion five times or seven times or ten times over the period of five years and every single time someone else gets your promotion and it seems that all those people who are promoted are less qualified and less experienced than you are and it seems that your turn just never comes even though you're more senior than others or you're the most senior. Now. The question is, what else could it be? Why are you not being promoted if it's not for your X, for your race, for your age, or whatever? Usually, that alone is not enough. Simply saying, what else could it be, is not evidence strong enough to prove a failure to promote case. But, again, in conjunction with other types of evidence, it could be helpful in proving that the reason for failure to promote is more likely than not to be discriminatory. The other type of evidence that can be used to, to prove discriminatory failure to promote is maybe to show a pattern that other people who belong to your class, to your age, to your gender, to your sexual orientation, to maybe a disability, that those people also apply and are denied, systematically denied a promotion. Now, to get that kind of evidence is hard. It's time consuming for attorneys, let alone for you. But if you can do a little bit of homework and see whether the same thing is happening with people who belong to your protected class, that could also be very useful in proving your failure to promote. So keep these types of evidence in mind when you're considering bringing a failure to promote case and it'll help you and your attorney assess whether your case is worth pursuing. And if you have any other questions about your potential failure to promote or any other type of employment case, you're welcome to email me directly. My email address is below this video. Thank you.